You might think that this image shows a pivotal point in our evolutionary history, the missing link that bridged the life that began in water and that which lives on land today. You might have looked at this fish and yelled, go back. Go back, please, I have back pain because of you. Well, I want you to hear what acclaimed biologist Tor Hansen had to say about this. We are all familiar with that cartoon image of evolution with the creature emerging from the water. It's the most destructive cartoon in the history of science. The most destructive cartoon in the history of science. That's a pretty strong statement, but I happen to agree. And by the end of this video, so will you. Not only is this not the fish that would go on to evolve into every land animal, this image has caused a lot of people to develop a less than accurate sense of how evolution works. So let's start with what this picture is actually showing us. This is Tick. Talik, a lobe-finned fish from 400 million years ago. They were built a lot like crocodiles, with flat skulls and eyes on the top of their heads. They were predators, with rows of sharp teeth and a neck that could move independently from its body. And they indeed were adapted for rudimentary movements on land. They had ribs that supported lungs, and their front fins had a skeletal structure that they could use to prop themselves up. When Tiktaalik was first discovered in Arctic Canada in 2004, it was a huge moment. We've all always known there was a common ancestor for all terrestrial vertebrates that left the water and colonized land. And we finally found a creature that fit the bill. This is why Tiktaalik got the nickname The Missing Link, because that's what every media outlet touted it as even though there was never any confirmation that it was one of our immediate ancestors. Just because a fish has lungs and can move around a bit on land, doesn't mean that it will go on to fully evolve onto land. Take the lungfish, for example, which has lungs and wriggles over muddy flats to find a place to hibernate. Or the mudskipper, which can breathe in open air with its specialized gills and fight each other outside of the water. These fish exist today and seem pretty intent on staying as fish. Because in order for an aquatic animal to evolve onto land, it would need a reason to. Let's run through a scenario. We need to evolve two components to live on land. Lungs for breathing air and limbs for locomotion. Both of these things need to arise from pre-existing traits that fish have and be under the appropriate selective pressure to evolve such that the gradual adaptation will increase survival and reproduction. Then these traits can be further repurposed into exclusive use on land. Let's start with lungs. Fish metabolize oxygen with water running through their gills. This requires running water, which the ocean has plenty of. But what if fish needed to live in an area with still water. Well, lungs to diffuse air from the surface would certainly help with that. And some think this was possible by repurposing a pouch in the foregut or near the pharynx. For limbs, we'll need to start with fins, which are made for navigating open water, which means they aren't very strong. A good place to develop strength would be areas with shallow water. There, repurposing fins to be stronger with bone and muscle could help you push off the ground to move around, or even to migrate from puddle to puddle. So one example of conditions that proto-limbs and lungs may have evolved in are still shallow waters. Now these traits can be further repurposed exclusively for land, again with the right selective pressures. There are many reasons why a fish might want to go onto land. To avoid predators and competition, to hunt tasty invertebrates, or to find better places to lay your eggs. Maybe the shallow water they live in tend to dry up for certain seasons and living outside of the water is a huge advantage. But as many pressures as there are that could have made a fish permanently leave the water, water, these pressures don't need to be present. Evolution doesn't have any incentives, it's based on what's good enough for survival and reproduction. If a species evolved traits for its environment and was successful, it wouldn't need to change if it continued to be successful. Some animals have been doing this for millions of years. Living fossils that haven't evolved very much at all because their strategies continue to work. Tiktaalik adapted lungs and limbs to survive in its surrounding environment still shallow waters. It was designed perfectly for the place it was and didn't need to move onto land, much like so many fish never needed to develop lungs or limbs in the first place. This is why the phrase missing link is misleading, because it implies that Tiktaalik specifically went on to colonize the land, 
when they almost definitely did not. We have found various fishapods that seem optimized for a life that wasn't fully aquatic nor fully terrestrial. Tiktaalik is merely one of those. In the same way that we didn't descend from monkeys but a lineage of apes, we did not descend from Tiktaalik but one of their cousins. We can still learn a lot from Tiktaalik because it likely shared a lot of features with our immediate ancestors, like how monkeys and apes are similar in a lot of ways, but that's why the more appropriate term for it is transitional form. It isn't the missing link per se, but it still reveals evolutionary trends in timelines regarding when fish first began to develop lungs and limbs. This image doesn't show a monumental moment when a fish popped its head out of the water for the first time and said, wow, I really like it up here. I think I want to stay. No, this shows a regular behavior for an animal that has had thousands of generations of adaptations to do this and then go right back into the water. So if you yelled at this guy to go back, he listened. Stop being mean to him. Humans and every other terrestrial vertebrate come from a single lineage of fish. One that diverged from us and lungfish and us and Tiktaalik and us and Tyrannosauri and us and chimpanzees. We only know a blip of the details of that lineage. Fossils are rare. We don't have traces for 99% of the life that's ever lived. Chances are the remains of our immediate ancestors ancestors have been lost to time. Who could possibly know all of the forms that our lineage took or how many times it combined with other lineages? Evolution isn't a straight line. It's messy, it's stochastic, it's what works. It doesn't have a goal or a purpose. It diverges and converges and circles back upon itself thousands of millions of times. That's the beauty of the process. For a long time, scientists didn't seem to understand why whales breathed air from the surface or why they reproduced as mammals. Then we found out that they were mammals that once walked the land. There are transitional forms that show this gradual return to the water and show how they diverged into other forms that remained on land, like hippos. This image is only a depiction of a single moment in the lifetime of an individual within a population that died and lived and fucked across generation upon generation with different forms and different behaviors. It could not possibly capture the full scope of evolution, and I'm not sure anything can. That's why, at no fault of the artist, this is the single most destructive, destructive cartoon, cartoon in, in the, the history, history of, science, of science because it gives us this false idea that evolution is a linear progression of one form replacing the other along the path. When in fact it's much messier, more complex, and more wonderful than that. If you've made it this far, I'd appreciate if you ticked to liked this video and left a comment. Okay, okay. We're still discovering new things about evolution every day, so if you want to learn a little bit more, then consider watching another video. Okay, bye.